This may be surprising, but I have never used a DF grinder before this, but they've gotten to a point where I just can't ignore them anymore. So today we review not one, but two grinders that seem way too good to be true. So for those of you who aren't aware, these grinders are manufactured by some company in China and sold all over the world under various brand names, the most well-known one being the Turin brand. The first grinder they ever launched was the DF64 and it became wildly popular because it was the only real budget single dosing flat per grinder that was available at the time. But it was far from perfect. In fact, from everything I've heard and reviews by people like Hoffman, became very clear that the DF64 was very much a work in progress and nowhere near being a proper polished product. Today we have a grinder that's gone through five, six versions and has changed so much from the original that it has been deemed worthy of the title DF64 Gen 2. And sitting next to it is the bigger brother, the DF83, but this too is currently on its second iteration and is called the DF83 V2. Now, having never used any of the DF grinders in the past puts me in a rather unique position to review them without comparing to previous iterations. This is great because it's a clean slate and I get to be a lot more critical. It's like telling your kid, dude, you got a D in your test. That's pretty rubbish. Compared to, dude, that's your first D after four straight Fs. Not bad. You get what I mean? Spoiler alert, neither of these grinders are Ds. And since the two grinders are near identical in terms of build, design, and workflow, I thought it just makes sense to review them together. Okay, so to properly gauge how good or bad a product is, I like to look at every aspect of it in detail and then form an opinion. So in this one, we'll first look at aesthetics or visual design, then build quality, followed by UX or the experience of actually using the thing. Once that's done, we'll move on to performance, then compare these grinders to a couple of other popular ones on the market today, and finally talk price and recommendations. So sit tight, this is gonna be a fun one. Now, before we get started, Luke from Me Coffee in the US was kind enough to ship these grinders all the way to me, but no money exchange hands, they had no say in what we've put in this video, and they don't get to watch it before any of you do. A big thanks to Blue Tokai Coffee Roasters for sending us a bunch of great coffee to test these grinders out. Check them out, the link is in the description below. And lastly, a huge thank you to Benki Brewing Tools for helping with all of the logistics. If you're looking to buy coffee gear, then use the link in the description below to get 5% off. It also helps the channel. Okay, kicking things off with aesthetics, even just glancing at the DF64, it's pretty damn obvious where the inspiration came from. Now, this may be an unpopular opinion, but I'm not a huge fan of how the optional grinders look. They built really well though. Of their entire lineup, the P64 is definitely the prettiest, but even that, the shoot and portafilter holder kind of ruin it for me. Weirdly, it looks like Pinocchio with T-Rex arms pleading for a hug. Come on, don't tell me you don't see it. Sorry, I have a weird imagination. Now the DF64 looks like a fat P64 and the DF83 looks like a fat DF64. So let's just say I'm not a huge fan of the form per se. But if I had to pick between the two, I'd say the 64 looks better because it's a little more proportionate. The finish on these grinders, however, is pretty nice for the most part. I definitely prefer the all black of the 83 to the chrome on the 64, but overall, both products look quite polished, especially when compared to the OG DF64. I don't love that the light on the DF83 is just on all the time. I would much prefer it to just come on when it's grinding. They've clearly come a long way, but if you're someone who really cares about how things look and feel, then these grinders still feel a little rough around the edges, especially when compared to grinders like the Ode or the Timo Sculptors. The bellows are fine. I'll tell you how I like to use them in a bit, and I quite like the splash of wood. So yeah. Overall, these are not bad looking at all and certainly don't scream I'm cheap like the original did with its vinyl jacket. But looks can be deceptive, so let's look at the build quality. So without any comparison to the previous versions, I'm happy to say that both these grinders are very well built. Now, there are weak spots and I'll get to those in a minute, but you're looking at a pretty much full metal build. Even on the inside, it's all metal and seems well made. If you've used the old version, then here's a nice little upgrade. We now have a wave spring that's less cumbersome than dealing with three small springs and keeping a track of them. It also technically does a better job of distributing the force across the circumference more evenly, which should help with alignment. I don't love these little rubber stops. They're required to dampen vibrations, but are really easy to lose. Luckily on the DF64, these little rubber pieces are fixed. These grinders are heavy, weighing in at 15 and seven kilos and look like they'll hold up well for a long time, but it's not all dandy. 
The portal filter holder is rubbish. It seems like a tacked on afterthought and just looks and feels rather puny when compared to the rest of the build. I also don't love the flimsy plastic cover at the bottom of the DF83. But given the price, I would say both grinders exceed expectations when it comes to build quality. Okay, so we've established that they look decent and they're built well, but how are they to use? I was particularly interested in this because of everything I've heard about the OG64. That to me sounded like a bit of a nightmare. Listen, I'm a tinkerer and I actually enjoy the process of modding things and changing their functionality to improve them. But like I mentioned earlier, the original DF64 just seemed like way too much of a work in progress. Luckily, that isn't the case with these two grinders. They've clearly evolved a lot and with that has come significant improvements in workflow. These grinders are better built, have better ergonomics, look nicer and are less messy. The older ones are known to regularly produce chaff blizzards. Starting at the top, we have the bellows, which work decently. Personally, I like to grind 0.5 grams more than I need, brew my coffee, and then use the bellows to purge the chute and discard those grounds. This way, I have a cleaner cup because I haven't brewed all the fines and chaff that the bellows tend to blow out, but I also have a clean grind part for the next time I need to use the grinder. The anti-popcorning disc is great. And I think this too was just lifted straight from the P64, one of the Cafetech grinders, I can't remember exactly where, but it works really well and looks nice. In fact, you could honestly do straight in here, grind and just tap the opening to eliminate the bellows altogether. If you do RDT and I still recommend it, you may have beans getting stuck on this platform, which you'd need to then slide off. The 83 also comes with a hopper. I wouldn't use it at home because I just don't want my beans exposed to light and air all day. But since this is a beefier grinder, you could potentially use it in a small low traffic cafe or a pop-up. So if that's something that you need, it's definitely nice to have. I have no use for it but you do get one. All right, hopping right along. The adjustment rings are fully stepless and on the 64, it's butter smooth, but the 83 can get pretty stiff, especially around the espresso range. And there's no real grip. I'm guessing this will settle over time or with a little KY jelly, although that could make it stiffer. Sorry. You have the grind size indicator that can be moved around to set the zero point. And this is really useful if you switch to third party burrs that can have different thicknesses and therefore lock at different positions on the dial. The indicator itself still has a bit of those DIY vibes going for it and could use a little more refinement to fit with the rest of the aesthetic. I also wish that the sticker just had numbers and no text and the markings were a tad closer together, but at this point, I'm nitpicking a little. Accessing the burrs is also super easy and tool free. Just keep turning the dial coarser and it'll eventually pop off. Then just lift the hopper slash topper carrier and you're in. As you can see, it's pretty damn clean in here, but we'll get to retention in a second. Okay, the catch cup is awful. Couldn't sugarcoat it if I tried. Firstly, the color and finish have no correlation to the grinder. It doesn't even look like it belongs here. Next up, we have this weird two-part design that's clearly been done with the intention of making this multifunctional, but honestly, fails miserably. The dosing ring has this awkward fit both onto the catch cup and the portal filter. I mean, check out this lovely ridge on the inside. And look at how well it fits on the portal filter. Yay! A gasket, really? It's almost like the rest of the grinder evolved and left the catch cup behind. It has this look that would have fit right in on the original DF64, flaunting its exposed gaskets. But here, it's just a no from me. Just give me something that actually fits with the aesthetic of the grinder and does a good job of catching and transferring grounds. Is that too much to ask? Okay, so these catch cup rants are becoming a recurring theme of sorts, but what can I say? Most of them are pretty crap and I use them all the time, so I think I'm allowed to complain. As for the portal filter holder, I'm just not gonna bother saying anything, but I'll leave you with some B-roll footage to marvel at its elegance. Anyway, let's move on. While we're on the subject of annoying things, the wire jutting out at the side of the 83 is right up there and really makes me appreciate the 64's base design where you can decide exactly where you want the wire to be. Retention on these grinders is pretty low and honestly, most of it is just grounds hanging out in the chute. Now, I really think there's a lot of scope for innovation when it comes to shoot design, and we are slowly starting to see companies focus on this, but having used several grinders and fiddling with DIY hacks, I think shorter is better, ideally not tapered, and a profile without corners like a circle, oval, or pill-shaped shoot, as opposed to square ones, gives the grounds fewer places to hang out and get stuck. The DF83 shoot checks none of these boxes, so yeah. The 64 at least is shorter, so that's good, but luckily we have the bellows to pick up the slack. Okay, as far as I'm aware, and correct me if I'm wrong, the only real difference between the DF83 V1 and V2 is the presence of the plasma generator. 
Now we're seeing this tech that's been borrowed from hair dryers in more and more grinders, starting with the fellow old Gen 2, and it greatly helps reduce static that's built up during the grinding process. Both these grinders have it and it works reasonably well, but it is a bit of a double-edged sword. The positioning of the two pins is deep in the chute and these in fact become a point of retention. Coffee builds up around them, which also makes them less effective. On the Ode, for example, the same kind of build-up happens, but the position of the needles makes it very easy to clean out with a brush. Here, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. So if you notice the grinder getting messy due to static, it's probably time to brush it down. So while I like the addition of the plasma generator, I just wish it was placed a little better so it was easier to clean and didn't obstruct the ground so much. And that brings me to a pretty massive con, but one that's pretty easily fixed. The fix also happens to be a little hack for filter coffee. Basically, it has to do with the declumper. Now, this DF83 came with a double layer declumper with really stiff flaps, and this caused a ton of regrinding. It's almost like it was designed to prevent grounds from coming out of the grinder. I mean, I was getting so many fines, even with the SSP multi-purpose burrs, that I could have probably pulled shots grinding at filter settings. So the first thing I tried was to ditch the declumper entirely, but this made retention around the plasma generator really bad. I mean, it was holding back 0.5 plus grams, so what I then did was to reduce it to a single flap, which I then pre-creased and folded it into the chute quite heavily. This seemed to guide the grounds down and out without having too much buildup around the top section. So I did this on both grinders and it's made a world of a difference. Both grinders house very capable motors so you aren't gonna have any stalling issues. The 64 has a substantial 250 watt motor and the 83 comes with a whopping 550 watt motor. A tad overkill, but I'm not complaining. Honestly, if this thing had some sort of cooling, then it could totally be used in a proper commercial setting. But with these motors come sweet symphonies that will rip your eardrums. And this could honestly be a deal breaker for some of you. The 64 is very loud and the 83 is downright obnoxious and neither are baritones but rather sopranos from hell. Here's how they sound. Yep, soothing. And to make things worse, the lovely catch cups don't really sit snug and add to the orchestra with a delightful rattle. So if being quiet is a requirement, then these are pretty hard to recommend. But let's end this segment with a huge positive on both of these grinders. Upgradability. If at some point you outgrow or get bored of the stock burrs, there are tons of 64 and 83mm third party burrs that can pretty much transform your grinder into completely different beasts and that's super exciting. Just within the SSP range you have the high uniformity, multi-purpose and lab suite that all produce very different cups. Now just keep in mind that putting SSP burrs in say the 83 bumps it up to like a thousand dollar grinder, pushing it squarely out of the budget segment, but having the optionality is amazing. I currently have the SSP multipurpose in the 83 and I've been drinking some incredible coffee. We have a monster video plan comparing all of the 64 and 83 mm SSP burrs. It's gonna be a super fun one, so get subscribed so you don't miss that. And if you're enjoying this video so far, then a like would be super. On to the most important thing, How's the coffee? Okay, straight off the bat, you can tell from the design that these are espresso first grinders, but they're both certainly capable of filter. Now, one's a tad better than the other, and they both require that declumper hack to get good filter coffee. But first, a quick note on alignment and seasoning before we get into it. In my case, the DF83 arrived pretty well aligned, but the 64 needed a bit of shimming. But like you just saw, they are pretty easy to open up and access the burrs, so it makes the joyful process of shimming a little more bearable. But there is one thing you should try before you start faffing with shims. Just try different orientations of the burr carrier first to see if alignment gets better. In my case, the 83 was already aligned, like I said, and the 64 got worse in the other two positions, so I had to shim. As for seasoning, I put around 500 grams to a kilo through each to have them settle down, and they've also been getting steadily better as I've run more coffee through them. I will say that the new burrs in the 64 took a little more time to season than the Etel Mills on the 83. So when it comes to espresso, both grinders do a really good job, but produce pretty different cups. The new burr set on the 64 definitely produces more vibrant shots with decent clarity, but the texture is a bit lower and the shots can be a tad edgy. With the 83mm Etel Mills, it's just thick. Gooey shots with texture for days coupled with tons of sweetness. If you're into slightly more developed roasts and you don't mind compromising on clarity a bit, then these will certainly put a smile on your face. They also do an amazing job with milk-based drinks. So yeah, while they both produce very different profiles in the cup, they do a good job and picking between them comes down to personal preference. The story with Filter is pretty similar. 
Now the 83 kind of surprised me here a little because with the style of espresso it produces, I wasn't expecting to enjoy the filter, but it honestly does pretty decently on filter too, producing very sweet and round cups. The 64 definitely came out ahead with a lot more clarity, structured acidity, and overall vibrancy in the cup. Okay, at this point, we've tested and reviewed enough grinders to warrant some sort of a showdown video. If that's something that you'd be interested in, then please let me know in the comments below and we'll see what we can do. But for now, here are some quick comparisons to help you decide which grinder fits your needs. With the 64, I think the closest comparison would be the old Gen 2. These new burrs are very close, if not a little clearer. The Ode still seems to pull more sweetness and juiciness and is a little more forgiving. For me personally, if I had to pick one for filter only, it would still be the Ode because I think it looks nicer, has slightly better workflow and is a lot quieter. If I needed to do Espresso too, then the DF obviously wins. The Sculptor 64S would be an excellent alternative to the DF64, but I haven't used it, so I wouldn't be able to recommend it confidently. When it comes to the DF83, the stock Etal Mill burrs remind me a lot of a traditional cone burr profile, but smoother and less harsh in the finish. Okay, comparing on price, the most obvious one would be the Sculptor 078S. This is a tricky one to pick. Going purely based on looks and workflow, the Sculptor wins hands down, in my opinion. It also produces great coffee, but you only have one other burr option, which is the turbo burrs, and that is filter only. With the DF83, however, you have several third-party burr options, and I've had the multi-purpose in here for the last month or so and had some of the best filter coffee. So I would say in its absolute stock form, I'd pick the 078S, but if we're talking upgrades, there's just no contest. Okay, so looking at the prices on the Me Coffee website, these come in at $399 for the 64 Gen 2 and $649 US dollars for the DF83 V2. Wait, no, looks like it's already at V3. Anyway, these grinders are the definition of value for money. And unlike the previous iterations, you aren't really compromising too much anymore. You now get good build quality, better workflow, less mess, no real popcorning, and easier access to the shoot. The DF64 is especially attractive for anyone getting a little more serious about their coffee. And the 83 is the cheapest way to enter the world of big burrs. So as long as you're willing to deal with a few of the quirks that still persist, and you're okay with the design still being a little rough around the edges, then both of these grinders are pretty damn baller. But now I'd love to hear from some of you who've actually been living with these grinders and using them every day. Does your experience align with mine? Did I miss anything? And do you have any questions? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching and brew our arms